Welcome everyone to the broadcast. I think we have sound. Oh my goodness. Cross your fingers. This all holds together. If not, I'm recording. We have a backup. <laughs> Thanks everyone for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to the new moon in Sidereal Aquarius guided intention setting practice. I'm Phaedra. I'm the astrologer and artist of Mystic Physic Astrology. Uh, let me just get my notes up in front of me and we will dive, dive, dive into tonight's intention setting. So I use Western Sidereal Astrology in my practice. If you're not familiar with that, you're going to want to make sure that you are working with your Fagan Bradley Sidereal Natal Chart. If you don't have your uh, Sidereal Rising Sign or Sun Sign, visit mysticphysic.com slash sidereal tools. You can use the free online calculator to find out your rising sign and your sun sign. Primarily, we're concerned with the rising sign. However, you can also do these practices for the sun sign. So my aim with the guided intention setting and releasing broadcasts that we do at the new moon and the full moon every month is really to offer guidance for you on how you can consciously use the energy of the lunations uh, to uh, influence your life in a positive way. It's about learning to be responsive to your transits rather than reactive to your transits. If you look ahead, you know what's coming. You can see how that is um, activating what's going on in your own natal chart, your own natal blueprint. You can understand how these... Um, how these influences work, you can plan ahead and you can adapt and be a little bit more responsive. And so that's really the idea. Tonight, what we're going to be doing is exploring the power of visualizing your radically new future. That's very exciting. We're going to uh, explore finding your zone of genius and we're going to dig into what it might look like if you disrupt the status quo in your life so that you can manifest outcomes in alignment with the life that you want to be living. So yes, grab a pen and pencil, grab your site aerial natal chart. You're going to want to be working with your Fagan Bradley rising sign. Grab a beverage if you need one and bring your intentions because we are going to use this opportunity to initiate radical change in our lives. Um, first part of the broadcast, what we're going to be doing is talking about the astrology of this particular particular new moon. Uh, the second part of the broadcast, we will get into the house this falls into for each of you according to your sidereal rising sign and what the themes of the house are. Uh, and that way, if you're not super familiar with the house systems, you'll kind of have an idea of what uh, area of your life to have your eye on as events around this new moon transpire. Uh, or to plan for how you want to leverage the new moon if you're wanting to do some intentional work. Um, and then uh, in the third part of the broadcast, we're going to dig specifically into the archetype and themes of uh, Aquarius as a sign, as an energy. Uh, and we're going to explore some prompts that we can use for setting our intentions for this new moon in Aquarius. This is the first new moon of the year where we have all the planets in direct motion, which is quite, quite, quite exciting. And I want to kind of set the stage before we dive into our talk about the astrology of this new moon in particular. What I want to do is talk about what's going on astrologically today and tomorrow because our new moon is actually on the 13th. And today is just the 11th. We're doing our intention setting just a little bit ahead of the new moon. So right now, today, we have the sun conjoining Neptune in Aquarius, which is, of course, the same sign that our new moon is taking place in just two days from now. Now, the sun is not just conjunct. Neptune is conjunct and parallel. And parallel is a special kind of aspect that functions similarly to a conjunction. It's when two planets are are at the same degree of declination, okay? And that can be north or south of the equator. Uh, if they're at opposite declinations, that's contraparallel. Now, a parallel aspect functions much like a conjunction. A contraparallel functions a bit more like an opposition. Now, with the sun already conjunct to Neptune, plus the parallel between them at 
uh, intensifies this conjunct energy. And we all know conjunctions kind of augment. Uh, they increase resonance between two planetary energies. They intensify and concentrate the planetary energies at a particular focal point in a chart. That focal point being the degree of the conjunction, right? Um, what this can suggest is in the days around today, something may happen, something may come to light or be highlighted in our conscious awareness that wasn't conscious previous to now, which may finally allow us to see things, something clearly or as if for the first time, something that we haven't been able to see clearly or understand clearly uh, for a long, long while. It's a, uh, very much like a burning off of the fog type of dynamic where we might be seen through the haze or potentially even seeing through some sort of gaslighting that may be going on. It's an opportunity for the actualization of dreams. It's an opportunity to take action for change. And it brings with it the possibility of epiphanies and strokes of insight or inspiration or a stroke of genius even. And so be paying attention to uh, uh, events or information, things that might come to light uh, today and in the days around today because they may make a difference because this conjunction and parallel are taking place in Aquarius. They may make a difference in what you choose to do with your new moon or how you choose to take action or take steps going forward. Uh, tomorrow, uh, another bit of relevant transit activity, we're going to have Mercury re-entering Aquarius, which is of course the same sign that our new moon is about to take place in. So March the 12th, Mercury is going to move back into Aquarius for the second time. Keeping in mind, he originally entered Aquarius on the 26th of January. So late January, he entered Aquarius. He was there just until the 3rd of February due to his retrograde, which began on the 30th of January. So he was only there for about a week. Then he backtracked all the way through much of Capricorn, went direct on the 21st of February, and now is finally leaving Capricorn for good to re-enter Aquarius. Um, that'll be just in time for Mercury's energy to be reactivated at the new moon in Aquarius the very following day, March 13th. And like I was saying earlier, that is the first new moon of 2021 with all the planets in direct motion. So it's our first of two, making it a pretty powerful new moon to take advantage of if you're uh, considering a major initiation for a big project that you'd like to move forward on this year for 2021. You make uh, an initiation in the days after this new moon and you'll have the full support of all the planets in the solar system in direct motion behind whatever that endeavor is for you. Uh, now with this being a new moon in Aquarius, so Uranus rules, Saturn is our co-ruler. Uh, when we're talking about traditional and modern rulers of new and full moons or any chart in particular, I do like to take a look at both rulers because I believe that insight can be gained from doing so. And oftentimes you'll get some sort of clue as to which ruler might be taking the stronger influential role in a given lunation. And so I encourage you to uh, take a look at charts through both lenses as much as possible because it can be quite insightful. This... Uh, new moon is kind of interesting and kind of challenging. Both of our rulers are activated with this new moon in the sense that uh, Uranus and Saturn are uh, currently squaring each other for this new moon, creating that bit of tension, right? A square is kind of a, a crisis point, if you will. And it can create some tension, it can create some dissonance, and it can create a situation or dynamic where there needs to be a resolution of some sort. It's usually a situation or dynamic that cannot be sustained uh, 
in its current circumstance. Something has to give, something has to change in order for whatever it is to resolve. With this new moon, what I see is um, some interesting things. Potential for some of us to have a loss of access to a partner's resources or a block or delay of access to others resources resources that we need that we do not currently have but we need them in order to make things happen in our own life this could be something like a business loan or any type of situation where someone else has what you need but there's some thing preventing you from being able to tap into whatever that resource is and from the looks of this chart that loss of access is, if not permanent, it's at least for this new moon, not reversible. And that taking a loss is the only path forward. Moving on without being able to tap into that needed resource is the only way to move on. This is a new moon that says the only way out is through. Okay. So keep in mind, um, as you are deciding what you might like to initiate with this new moon, uh, it might be worth taking a look at our new moon next month to see if that might be a little bit more supportive of whatever endeavor uh, you had in mind. Unless being able to work without access to desired resources could be a beneficial skill or a beneficial feature of whatever it is that you are working on or planning to initiate with this new moon. In that case, this could be perfectly fine. Uh, if you're needing to uh, begin something that just smacks of self-sufficiency and independence, well, a new moon like this one <laughs> in the sign of independence of Aquarius, right, is potentially just the ideal scenario in that case. But like I said, it looks like a loss of access to a partner's resources or to some sort of resources that you do need access to. Um, or a block or delay of those being available to you such that you have to move forward anyway and make do without, that is very much the dynamic. Now, another thing that I'm seeing with this chart is a sense of disappointment around manifesting a long-held hope or dream. Now, that could be something as basic as something that you've wanted for a very, very long time is not just going to pan out or it's going to pan out, but not in the way that you had hoped exactly. Something might not be quite what you had envisioned. Uh, something, some circumstance or situation is such that this long held hope or dream is not quite manifesting up to what you had wanted to get out of it. There's a risk of destabilization in friendships, in social circles, in networks. There's a risk of destabilization in business income or revenue from a business that you own. Um, now, there is a suggestion with this chart that some sort of behind the scenes activity may help you secure whatever funding or needed resources those are that you are potentially blocked from accessing through a partner or through whatever traditional avenue you thought you were going to be able to tap into them through. Some sort of behind the scenes activity may help you secure access to those resources um, or behind the scenes activity may influence estate or will or investment or financial planning of some sort. Okay. Now also with this new moon, we have an opportunity for relaxation and self care. And I would encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Uh, it's not often that we have that baked into a chart at a new or full moon. This time we do. So I would take some time uh, in the days uh, on or just after this new moon 
to um, keep some some time for yourself where you can hide away from the world and engage in whatever you enjoy most for relaxation and self-care. One thing I do want to call out with all of the Neptune conjunction activity happening just before and just after this particular new moon, um, Neptune may cast kind of a surreal spell over what would normally be a very airy and intellectual new moon. Uh, So do expect that. It's a new moon in Aquarius, but not quite like what you might expect most new moons in Aquarius to do or to be. And then finally, regarding the astrology of this particular new moon, I would want to leave you with this word. And it relates to Neptune's influence here. If you don't know or can't see the path ahead, or if the future is uncertain, take a leap of faith. Okay, take a leap of faith. And that pretty well wraps it for talking about the astrology of this particular new moon in Aquarius and what you can expect from that. And what we'll do now is move on to part two of our broadcast and here in part two we're going to have a closer look at which house this new moon falls into for each of you according to your sidereal rising sign and what the themes of that house are so diving right in for Aries this is an 11th house new moon which of course has to do with friends organizations hopes and dreams the 11th house also rules income from businesses that you own okay Uh, For Taurus, this will be a 10th house new moon for you. So that, uh, of course, means career, uh, professional life, awards and recognition are part of the 10th house, achievement, status and reputation, uh, your public life, basically, right? For Gemini, this will be a 9th house new moon for you. So this has to do with higher education. It has to do with long distance travel, long distance communication, things like publishing and broadcasting, Uh, anything involving large audiences or long distances. Um, Ninth house also has to do with foreigners and foreign places, also religion, philosophy, and law. For Cancer, this is an eighth house new moon. So eighth house new moon relates to others other people's resources that are at your disposal has to do with things like investment earnings or insurance, like things like premiums or insurance claims that are being paid out to you. Could be taxes, both taxes that you owe or taxes that are due refunded to you. Can relate to inheritances and wills and estate planning. It can relate to bonus and commission income if you earn money that way. And then some non-financial themes of the eighth house relate to the occult relate to death, rebirth, and transformation cycles, relate to the metaphysical, uh, anything involving research or investigation, the digging up of secrets or hidden information. Uh, For Leo, this is a seventh house new moon for you. So that has to do with uh, partnership. It has to do with marriage. It has to do with business relationships. It has to do with your relationships with other people in general, including open enemies. And when we're talking about the descendant specifically, it points to what we tend to reject about ourselves and project onto other people in our lives. Okay. Uh, Seventh house, uh, new and full moons are always a wonderful opportunity for shadow work if you are so inclined. For Virgo, this will be a sixth house new moon. So work, health, pets, daily routines, habits, schedules, things like that. Employees, if I didn't say that already. Uh, For Libra, a fifth house new moon. Uh, So creativity and children, romance and true love, things that we do for fun and pleasure, sports, risk-taking, gambling, that sort of thing. For Scorpio, this will be a fourth house new moon. And fourth house relates to home and family. It relates to real estate and a residential situation or residential status. Relates to our parents. It can be either one or both of the parents. For Sagittarius, this will be a third house new moon for you. So that has to do with transportation, uh, writing and communication, travel, 
uh, that happens locally to you. Communication that takes place over short distances. It has to do with siblings, neighbors, uh, aunts and uncles, cousins, our immediate environment, our neighborhood and community, basically. Um, for Capricorn, this will be a 12th house, excuse me, a second house new moon for you. Sorry about that. For Capricorn, this will be a second house new moon for you, which is wealth. It's possessions. It's movable assets. It's earned income and expenses, things that you own uh, and uh, things that you owe uh, or, well, need to pay for, not owe like debts. That's eighth house, right? For Aquarius, this will be a first, first house new moon for you. So birthday uh, new moon, which is kind of fun. That's like a wild card new moon. You can use it however you want to. Uh, but the first house relates to personality. It relates to our identity. It relates to our self-expression, our physical body and our appearance, how we show up in the world, the role that we play or the role that we take on in the world. And finally, for Pisces, this will be a 12th house new moon for you. So privacy and seclusion, spirituality, the unconscious mind, highly personal or private projects, spiritual practices, institutions of seclusion. Those are all 12th house themes as are uh, addiction, escapism, uh, how we hide from reality and run away from things, right? And so that is kind of wraps our uh, quick run through of which house this falls into for each sidereal rising sign and what the themes of those houses are and if you're ready now we'll move on to part three of our broadcast and here in part three we're going to explore the Aquarius archetype and themes the nature of Aquarius we're going to dig into some prompts to consider as we set our intentions for this new moon. And Aquarius is fixed air. Don't be confused. I know Aquarius is the sign of the water bearer, but it's an air sign. It's fixed air. And so this is a mental sign. It's mental energy. It's why we associate it with the scientist and the inventor and the genius, right? Um, the free thinker, the original, the original, the eccentric. This is focused or sustained thought, co-ruled by Saturn here, right? Not just Uranus. So this is where thought is limited. It's harnessed, reined in. These are Saturnian concepts. They're limited to a particular concept or problem or idea, etc., or related to the development of thought over time, over extended periods of time. So focused thought or sustained thought. And through societies or associations, through clubs or organizations, corporations, uh, the mission or commitment to outcome, commitment to action, commitment to ideology or philosophy. So this is what we mean when we talk about fixed air, fixed ideas, fixed thinking, uh, commitment to a singular, right? Uh, whether that's a mission or an outcome or a course of action or an ideology or a philosophy, right? Um, it's about unity of purpose in that sense. Aquarius is the sign of universal love, of brotherly love, right? But this is an impersonal or impartial love. It's not the intimate love of Venus. It's not the vulnerable love of Venus. It's a universal brotherly love. It's uh, caring for our larger human family is what this is about. It's the sign of humanitarian principles and all of the things that we do for the collective, the ways in which we better society through our participation in it, right? Aquarius rules knowledge. It rules science and technology. It rules electricity, genius, invention, and innovation, and the future. 
Aquarius, the imagery of Aquarius is that of the celestial water bearer. So it's depicted as two wavy lines or as a person, often male, pouring water from a vessel, right? And this is where sometimes folks have confusion about Aquarius being an air sign because of that water imagery in the iconography of Aquarius itself. Aquarius is an air sign. It's not a water sign. The water is symbolic in this case. Okay. Water signs are typically associated with emotion. Air signs are mental signs and they're associated with thought and thinking. And in the case of the water bearer, the water being poured out is symbolic of the knowledge which Aquarius brings to and shares with all of mankind, to better mankind, for the benefit of all of society, basically. So the archetype of Aquarius is that of future man, full of all the world's knowledge, all of our cumulative knowledge of mankind, and using that knowledge for the betterment of all of mankind or humankind. Aquarius is the genius. It's the visionary. It's what moves humanity forward in unison and in unity. And what does it mean to be visionary? What's a visionary person? Well, yourdictionary.com defines visionary as someone or something that thinks about the future or advancements in a creative and imaginative way. A person who is ahead of his or her time, who has a powerful plan for change in the future is an example of a visionary. And so Aquarius, like its ruler Uranus, who's planetary motion, its diurnal rotation is perpendicular to that of all the other planets, is rebellious against the status quo. It's kind of a counterculture kind of energy. It's individualistic and seemingly aloof, right? Now, new moons present opportunities to allow or invite the new into our lives and ultimately to learn through expanding our boundaries and growing as a result. And I want you to uh, consider taking the opportunity to do that at this new moon. This is the time when you're going to want to grab your pen and paper. We're going to explore some prompts for what we can set our intentions with and around for this new moon in Aquarius. I have, of course, my moon gazing journal. This is where I always write my uh, new moon intention settings in it. Um, so let's go through these prompts really quickly. I want you to take a moment to think about what project or major initiation, journey, or goal you're ready to manifest into your life, uh, especially if it is related to themes of the house that Aquarius falls into in your sidereal natal chart. Um, so Aquarius is about knowledge as a combination of information, which is what Mercury rules through Gemini, right? And experience, which is what Sagittarius rules, or what we could say Jupiter rules through Sagittarius. So it's an amalgam of information combined with experience, which brings us to a type of knowledge better known as wisdom, right? And so thinking of your Aquarius house and considering what you know now 
that you may not have known in the past, considering what you know now, and especially considering whatever has come to light, whatever epiphany or stroke of insight you've had related to this moon, or excuse me, sun, Neptune conjunction and parallel, considering what you know now, what might you have done differently in your Aquarius house? Spend some time with that and then consider this thing that you would have done differently. What's stopping you from doing that right now? What obstacle, what limitation would you have to be willing to or able to move through or around or release in order to do that right now. Whatever that thing is that you would have done differently in your Aquarius house. In what way would you have to rebel against the norm to affect that change? So this is especially pertinent for those of you who maybe are facing this potential disappointment related to the manifestation of a long-held hope or dream. How do you integrate that disappointment and move on, move beyond it, on your way towards what you really want, right? Considering what you now know, what might you have done differently? Because this is an opportunity to do it differently. Okay. What radically new future would you manifest for yourself if you could? What would it look like? How radically different would it be from what you have right now today? Don't limit yourself in the imagination of this. Okay. Right? We're talking about Aquarius the visionary. So it's time for us to be visionary. And then it's time for us to visualize, right? This is a great time when there's a new moon in Aquarius. It's a great time to do a vision board. And I would encourage you, if you are the type that likes to do vision boards, even if you've already done one for the year, consider spending some time in the days around this new moon to do like a miniature vision board of what you want uh, for whatever it is you're initiating right now with this new moon. What's your genius or zone of genius that you could tap into more? How could you do that in service to your fellow human beings, to the world? And then finally, how would you disrupt the status quo if you could in that part of your life? How would you disrupt the status quo in pursuit of what outcome? I'm going to recap these just quickly for anyone who might be tuning in late or running into issues with the broadcast, right? Like I am. Okay, so Aquarius being about knowledge as a combination of information and experience and considering what you know now, what might you have done differently in your Aquarius house and what's stopping you from doing that right now? What obstacle, limitation, or delay would you have to be willing to release, to move around, to overcome in order to be able to? In what way would you have to rebel against the norm to affect that type of change, knowing what you know now? What's stopping you? What radically new future would you manifest for yourself if you could? What's your genius or what zone of genius you could tap into? And how could you tap into it in service to your fellow human beings or in service to the world? And then finally, how would you disrupt the status quo in your Aquarius house if you could? 
to what outcome? Okay, so everyone take a few minutes with your pen and paper to write down what you intend for this part of your life, where you find your Aquarius house in your sidereal natal chart. Uh, take a few moments to uh, really get clear on what it is you want to achieve related to that and spend a few minutes. I would encourage you, once you've done that, drawing or sketching out what that outcome is, what that thing is that you want to achieve. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be all stick figures. It doesn't matter in that regard, but draw out what is that final outcome, what it is that you want to manifest. And I do encourage you to spend some time visualizing it in as much detail as possible. Doing that practice daily is a really powerful way to support your intentions. But what I find with drawing out or sketching out what it is you want to manifest is that it really helps it manifest even faster. That's been my personal experience with that. That's why I encourage you. And because we're talking about Aquarius, this is uh, the sign of the visionary. It's about visualizing, right? And so I'm going to encourage you to tap into that resonant energy of this new moon and do some visualization yourself. Um, I'm going to just really quickly read to you what it says in the Moon Gazing Journal for today. We actually have two of them to read for today. Um, the first one says predictions for both fresh and salt water fishing are based partly on the moon's rising and setting times and on the phases of the moon. So fishing by moon cycles is a thing. If you didn't know that, just like gardening by moon cycles. Um, and then here on the next page where I'm going to be writing my intentions, it says, this is kind of neat. The youngest moon rocks are as old as the oldest earth rocks. There you go. The moon older than the earth. Fascinating stuff. All right, everyone take a few minutes, write out what it is you're wanting to initiate with the new moon in Aquarius and uh, get specific about the outcome that you want for that. Um, and how you're going to be visionary and going about achieving it for yourself. Here we go. What we'll do after is reconvene in the comments section and share uh, our intentions for this new moon, if you will. That'll be fun. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. If you need more time, please take it. I um, wasn't really expecting this outcome, but we're talking about the ninth house here, right? And ninth house is a lot, a lot of what I do with mystic physics is ninth house related, ninth house themed. And I have Gemini rising, so ninth house it is. And so here's what I wrote out that I intend to focus my energy and creativity into uh, the Mystic Physic Patreon feed and the benefits for Patreon supporters and integrating that new feature and its benefits into the Mystic Physic universe. I use the word universe for lack of a better word, but I want to integrate it into the whole in such a way that it um, adds to what's already there. Uh, in such a way that offers more to you, the listeners, the viewers, the audience, gives you more benefits, is more useful. Um, and so that's really kind of the idea and the goal. I want it to be um, an enhancement, right? And so I wrote that this integration will support meeting the needs of viewers and listeners in a way which serves their highest good and allows me to serve to the best of my skills, talents, and abilities. And that this includes a more effective and valuable email content delivery strategy. And I know that sounds kind of boring, right? Like, let's talk about astrology, Phaedra. Let's not talk about email content delivery systems. Well, 
they're one in the same, right? Because that's how I get astrology to you. And I've been kicking around some ideas for um, stuff that you will maybe find valuable if I were to send you uh, occasional emails with some extra stuff that I don't normally send out maybe once or twice a month. And so I really kind of want to refine that idea, refine what that looks like, kind of hash out the details and get to playing around with the actual doing of it. Um, and that includes things like more tutorial videos, uh, up-to-date information in the form of videos and blog posts on important and notable transit activity. Um, and this, the idea is for it to be... Um, a, an experiential, an experimental endeavor, uh, an educational endeavor where we take off with some ideas and get the ball rolling and learn as we go. Um, uh, something that would allow room for tweaks and changes and adjustments over time as we dive in and play around with some of it and identify what works and what works best for everyone who's involved. What type of information serves you best, what you need to know, when you want to know it, um, what's the best way to deliver it, that sort of thing. And so it's all about enhancing and streamlining and improving uh, the ways in which I get astrology to you, astrological information to you, uh, and hopefully ways that um, end in speeds. I don't know if that's the word that I want on schedules that are beneficial and useful. So basically, you know, ahead of time, it's helpful to know what's coming ahead of time, right? And that's really my intent is to kind of enhance what we already have here, build on it, improve it, uh, find ways that we can do even more, uh, even better in the pursuit of uh, navigating life through the wisdom of the stars and the planets and the solar system, which is the whole idea of what we're doing here right now, isn't it? Uh, and so that's really um, what I want to see come out of this new moon. Um, I am also probably going to do this same practice later for my sun sign because that makes it a second house new moon and that is highly relevant to business income, right? And so I think that's an energy that I want to leverage. That's a new moon opportunity that I want to take advantage of having all the planets in forward motion or apparent forward motion at the same time. So be writing down on your paper what it is you intend for this part of your life, what you want to achieve related to that. Uh, like I said, spend a few minutes drawing or sketching. I'll actually have to think of how would I sketch this out? I don't know how it translates very well to images or sketches, but... Uh, that's something that I'll spend some time with this evening. And like I said, whatever you draw out, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to translate your ideas and your intentions visually onto paper. And just the act of doing that will help speed up the manifestation of it. And uh, do set aside some time. I would say maybe five or 10 minutes every day for the next 10 days or so visualizing the outcome that you want for what it is you're initiating with this new moon and maybe even write an affirmation around what it is you intend to manifest or achieve. Uh, it's a powerful time to create a vision board of the radically new future that you envision for yourself, whatever that means for you. Um, I do want to invite you, if you're so inclined, to check out our new Mystic Physic Astrology podcast at anchor.fm slash mystic physic. Uh, you can uh, listen to that on your favorite podcasting platform. And don't forget uh, that you can follow Mystic Physic Astrology on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, many, many uh, social media platforms where you can follow Mystic Physic Astrology and stay up to date on uh, all of the um, information and analysis that I bring your way. Um, 
if you click on the notification bell at YouTube, you'll be notified every time we upload a video. And so that way you won't ever miss a broadcast. That might be a good idea to do. Although this year, hopefully we're going to be better and more consistent about sending out email reminders to you also not only of uh, in advance of when we're going to have a broadcast, but afterwards with the replay link. And then, of course, I do want to invite you to head on over to mysticphysic.com slash 2021 and order your 2021 Ultimate Astrological Planner if you haven't got yours yet. And also, remember, you can now support Mystic Physic Astrology on Patreon at patreon.com slash mysticphysic. You can sign up to support the broadcast at one of three different support levels for as little as $3.33 a month. You can help support the broadcast and uh, you'll get uh, fun exclusive goodies for doing so. We appreciate your support and want to thank you for joining us and we'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much.